So, biomonitoring gives scientists important information about the chemicals we're exposed to and how they affect our bodies. That information helps our government and public health officials make more informed decisions. Shown is an image of a trailer that reads, CDC National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. CDC conducts a survey every two years to assess the health and nutritional status of adults and children in the U.S. It's called the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, or NHANES for short. Scientists at the biomonitoring program use the NHANES survey results to gather exposure data or information about the levels of chemicals in people's bodies. Here's how that works. First, scientists choose a sample, a small group of people who participated in the NHANES survey, to analyze. To reflect our diverse population here in the United States, scientists make sure to include people of different age groups, genders, and ethnicities. Then, they study blood and urine samples from this group of people to find out what chemicals and how much of those chemicals are in their bodies. Shown is a webpage featuring the CDC's National Report on Human Exposure to Environmental Chemicals. Finally, CDC publishes the results in a report called the National Report on Human Exposure to Environmental Chemicals and Updated Tables. This report is the most comprehensive assessment ever made of human exposure to environmental chemicals. Shown is the cover of the CDC's fourth National Report on Human Exposure to Environmental Chemicals, 2019. The first version of the report, published in March 2001, included exposure data about 27 chemicals. Additional reports followed in 2003, 2005, and 2009, along with several report updates. Each report and update included exposure data on more chemicals. The latest version includes exposure data for more than 300 chemicals and includes findings from 1999 to 2016. Here are a few of the chemicals included in the report. They include lead, pesticides, and phthalates. All that biomonitoring data has led to important policy changes that protect our nation's health. For example, biomonitoring research played an important role in reducing lead use in the United States. People who are exposed to high levels of lead can get lead poisoning, which may cause learning disabilities and behavior problems. Very high levels of lead in the body can cause seizures, coma, or even death. Shown is an image of a sign that reads, For use as motor fuel only, contains lead, tetraethyl. In 1981, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, was considering changing the law to allow more lead in gasoline. But thanks in large part to biomonitoring research, the EPA decided to restrict the use of leaded gasoline instead. Here's how it happened. The EPA's research predicted that leaded gasoline would have a limited impact on blood lead levels, or the amount of lead people have in their bodies. But a CDC survey showed that blood lead levels had dropped from 1976 to 1980, and that the drop tracked decreased use of lead in gasoline. Over that time period, decreased use of lead in gasoline resulted from the introduction of unleaded gasoline in the United States. More research showed similar relationships between lead and gasoline and blood lead levels in other countries. Based on this critical scientific evidence, the EPA decided to restrict the use of leaded gasoline, and as remaining lead was removed from gasoline, blood lead levels continued to decline. Removing lead from paint has also made a big impact on lead levels in the U.S. By 1999, blood lead levels in children ages 1 to 5 had fallen to historic lows. But we haven't completely solved the lead problem. While lead-based paint was banned from use in housing in 1978, as many as 24 million older homes still have lead paint or lead-contaminated dust and about 4 million of those are home to young children who are most likely to be affected by lead poisoning. Shown is the cover of the CDC's fourth national report on human exposure to environmental chemicals, 2019. So, biomonitoring scientists continue to track lead levels in Americans, helping us assess how well national programs aimed at reducing or eliminating lead exposure are working. More information about blood lead levels is available in CDC's National Report on Human Exposure to Environmental Chemicals and Updated Tables. Biomonitoring has also helped us put policies in place to reduce people's exposure to secondhand smoke. Nicotine is the addictive chemical used in tobacco products like cigarettes, vaping devices, and chewing tobacco. Even people who don't smoke or use other tobacco products might be exposed to nicotine when they spend time in places where other people are smoking. 
This is called secondhand smoke, and it can be harmful to people's health. Codeine is a substance that forms in your body when you're exposed to nicotine. By measuring the levels of codeine in a person's body, scientists can tell how much nicotine they've been exposed to. CDC biomonitoring scientists developed a way to measure very low levels of codeine in people's bodies. They found that 88% of people who didn't smoke were exposed to secondhand smoke, and people who worked around tobacco had even higher levels of codeine in their bodies. This data inspired new laws to restrict smoking in public buildings. When CDC measured codeine levels again in 1999 and 2000, they found that average codeine levels among people ages 3 and older had decreased by more than 70%. That means people were exposed to a lot less secondhand smoke. The 2006 Surgeon General's report celebrated this dramatic reduction. Shown is a graphic titled, Trends in Exposure of Non-Smokers to Secondhand Smoke in the U.S. Population, National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, 1988-2002, to Perkel et al., 2006. However, there is still more work to be done. Children's codeine levels are still twice those of adults. And new tobacco products like e-cigarettes and vape pens could also present serious health risks. Shown is the cover of the CDC's fourth national report on human exposure to environmental chemicals, 2019. Biomonitoring scientists continue to track codeine levels to assess how well efforts to reduce secondhand smoke exposure are working. For more information on codeine levels, see CDC's national report on human exposure to environmental chemicals and updated tables.